From Burlingame, California, it's theCUBE. Covering Sumo Logic Illuminate 2019. Brought to you by Sumo Logic. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at Sumo Logic Illuminate 2019. We're here at the Hyatt Regency San Francisco Airport. It's about 800, 900 people, packed house uh, in the keynote earlier this afternoon. We're really excited to have the, uh, the guy that was running the whole show and is running the whole show here for this company. He's Ramin Sayer, the president and CEO of Sumo Logic. Ramin, great to see you again. You too, thanks for having me. Absolutely, so third year of the show, second year of us being here. I wonder if you can just kind of reflect on how this thing is growing. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really a testament to the community more so than Sumo. Um, and, you know, we've seen a lot of growth naturally because of where customers are with their own adoption of technologies such as cloud, but also the transformations that they're going through, like digital transformation, cloud transformation. So naturally that allows for more audience of people to attend a conference like this because this is not a sales and marketing conference. This is a user conference. And as evidenced by the fact that 60 plus percent of the content is users themselves in the community presenting. Right. And you talked about the theme as really this intelligence gap, uh, which, which was really a key piece of the keynote. And it's interesting because it's talking about data and, and huge amounts of data flow, exponential growth in, in types of data, flow of data, sources of data, yeah. and yet data is just data until it turns into information. And then if it turns into good information, then actually can maybe turn into some intelligence and some action that you can do something with. But there's no person that has the ability to manage the data flows now that we're starting to see. So you guys are really coming at that at the core. You've been at it for a long time. You made some great early on bets being yeah. cloud native, and now really starting to see the benefits as this exponential growth of data just hits everybody. Yeah, you're spot on. I think. Um you know, maybe to add to that, uh, I think the challenge that we see despite the tsunami of data growth is that um, a lot of organizations still struggle because they lack the ability to be able to share the insights and intelligence they glean from this data. Um, so a lot of the things we spoke about the keynote today was the whole notion of the intelligence gap that exists. And that's predicated on the fact that you know, we're all going through some sort of transformation or migration or business model change. And with that comes five challenges that we talked about with respect to continuous intelligence. We internally has actually referred it to as a challenge of minding the gap of the intelligence trap. Because we need to help our customers become intelligent and collaborate and communicate much more effectively by virtue of what we've become that what we've become is that trusted partner, that data steward, that is sitting on, on all this valuable insights that we need to be able to provide continuously to our community of users. Right, and you talked about it really along three different metrics, right? The operations metrics, which is probably what people think of top of mind, yeah. the security metric, uh, and then as well as the business metric. And sure. you know, we had a Robert Parker on earlier from SmartThings, Samsung SmartThings, and, and he made an interesting comment that they are pervasive users of Sumo Logic within the company, which I thought was really interesting because I, you know, everyone's chasing innovation. Yeah. How do you get innovative? I think one of the core ways is you give more people more access to more data and the tools to actually do something with it. That seems to be a big piece yeah. of the, of the, uh, the smart thing story and that's really a big part of your guys' messaging. Yeah, I mean, I think unlike other vendors who have restrictions on adoption and usage, you know, and or charging by a user model, you know, we're trying to make sure we tear those silos down. And one of the natures, of, one, by nature, one of the things you have to do is provide ubiquitous access. And second thing you have to do is be able, be able to address all different types of data so you can get value for all those users and ubiquitous access. And so you hear about that through not just smart things, but a lot of the other customers and partners that are here today, because that's unlike the old models. Right, right. It's interesting, it reminds me back to you know, 97, 98, 99, when we first started seeing people build web applications, and they had all these pricing models based on you know, cores and CPUs, because it was based on how many employees were inside the, inside the walls and would have access yeah. to the applications, and they try to apply this to, to a public web page, it doesn't work. We still see some of that nasty <laughs> legacy stuff though, it's right? And now it was 20 years later. So you made a big announcement today about really changing your pricing model to more fit the realities of the world in which we live. Yeah, look, on the surface, why it seems revolutionary, it's not. It's evolutionary for Sumo. It's something we've been doing since we first started. Um, for example, we always provided a service 
that charges an average for the month, not for the penalty of going over a day. We didn't charge for users because that's antiquated model. More importantly, we actually provided an economic model all along that mirrored the business model of all these companies. Right. So the more you ingest and use, the lower your costs become, not more. Right. And so the things that we announced today is a further commitment that we've been making to the community and effectively taking the headache away from them. Because if you look at these other tools, for example, that provide observability for monitoring or for security, you have to go calculate the count the licenses. You have to go look at the number of data points per minute. You have to look at the number of nodes. And who wants to manage software? You want to manage services. And so what we've done is really taken the next license, or taken an existing licensing model that we have to the next level and providing a credit-based system so that you can flex and choose what you want to use in a given day, in a given month, and given period or cycle across a new suite of packages or a suite of products that we brought to market. Right, or whatever whatever you're optimizing for that particular day, that particular yeah. moment, that particular business unit. But it also ties to something you mentioned earlier. It, it actually helps tear down those silos that other vendors are creating because it provides ubiquitous access to all users for all different types of data, right? And instead of trying to keep those silos and separation that exist, that further challenges the intelligence gap that we're seeing in the intelligence economy. Right, right. What, another uh, great slide I thought earlier in the keynote was given by um, Anheuser-Busch. Yeah. Um, and he talked about his security infrastructure and, and, and all different layers of security and the solution that he has uh, for, for you know, front, kind of front door and phishing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the great thing is you basically crossed all those application stack and, and it's a pretty interesting position for you guys to be in to be able to integrate with all these other kind of point solutions that, that make up parts of the puzzle and to bring it all back and to still have kind of this one ubiquitous data analytics platform to go in and do stuff with that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's truth be told, something we've been doing for a long time. Um, I think the visual that you saw there is the challenge that a lot of our customers have. And specifically, they have these silos of you know, endpoint or firewall right. or email or whatever else, and they can only make sense of it by leveraging the monitoring of those silos to an intelligence platform like Sumo. And so, the same thing that you saw in security with Anheuser-Busch, being able to leverage those silos into an intelligence platform for security, we see in the monitoring space for developers and operations teams. So they'll have siloed tools, but observability is not it. You need continuous reliability, and therefore you need to be able to take all those different types of data and signals, just like you saw in security, for the different types of infrastructure and applications that you're managing, and provide an intelligence-based system and service, not a monitoring based only system and service. Right. Another big trend that's happening, you guys are riding this wave, and you had Jennifer up from, from uh, Google Cloud, and she she had the same presentation on Anthos, I think, at the Google Cloud Platform yep. Summit earlier today. You know, the, the momentum behind hybrid cloud is, is kind of the, the whipsaw of, you know, let's all jump into public, and then let's not jump in, and it's hybrid, and it's multi. The, the fact of the matter is everything's going to where it's supposed to be, which is it's workload specific, and the workload should run where the workload should run. Um, really a great momentum for you guys to be able to leverage, because regardless of where the workflow is running, based on where it should run, I need to see it in a unified front back, sure. at the, back at the ranch. Yeah, but Jeff, I think this is what we saw even last year when we put the uh, continuous intelligence report out then, let alone the, the changes we saw this year. For example, we saw container technologies move from development to production last year and north of 2x growth. Now we're seeing orchestration technologies like Kubernetes more than 2x growth. And what's driving the multi-cloud comment that you made is because the customers want flexibility and choice of where those workloads run. Historically, they haven't been able to do that until now, leveraging container orchestration technology that uh, builds an abstraction layer from the IIS or infrastructure as a service layer. And obviously, a testament to what Google's been doing with Anthos and the partnership we have with them to develop and integrate things for Anthos, Istio, and Service Mesh. Yeah. So what's next? What are you looking for? I can't believe we're almost done with, with, with 2019. It still shocks me every time I flip the calendar. What are your priorities going forward? Another great event, 2020, the year of insight and all knowledge. Where, yeah, uh, I mean, where's I think, Sumo going to be? Uh, you know, we started down this journey before the market was there. And I think the unique position and fortunate position that we're in right now is 
more and more of that market opportunity is coming to us and the community is getting more powerful and stronger day by day and year by year. So we're very early innings of this, honestly. And so what do we see going forward to your question is a lot of the you know, execution of our strategy that we set out a while ago to build the only continuous intelligence platform and more importantly, the new category of software called int continuous intelligence that's really mirroring the op operating model and economic model of every single digital business that needs to thrive, not just survive. Right, in an era of exponential growth. An era of exponential Of data, growth. complexity, sources, types, which is uh, a good place to be. Indeed. <laughs> All right, well Ramin, I know you're super busy. Thanks for taking a few minutes and, uh, and congratulations on a back. great show, for sure. Appreciate you being here. All right, he's Ramin, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at Sumo Logic Illuminate 2019. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.